Hello and welcome back for part two of this week's Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 update on the Lawrence Plays channel. Last video we had a look through some of the puzzles we've been working on recently and uh, so there's, there was a fair number of spoilers in there. But in this video I'll just be looking through us progressing with all the normal sciences. So it'll be spoiler free apart from, you know, just showing off how a bit of late game space exploration and Crastorio 2 works. So let's get stuck in. As I told you in the last video, I managed to get the Immersite production up and running at a nice rate again. So we've got lots of Immersite plates, or Immersion plates, and Immersite crystals coming through over here. And that means we've got a nice healthy supply of them being dropped off over here, where they can be fed through into these assembly machines, in order to be made into the Aeroframe scaffolds, which can then come up here to be made into low density structures. I've also put better productivity modules into the machines around here as well, I want, because this is fairly expensive stuff, and we've, we've had lots and lots of shortages of the Immersion plates, so I thought making sure we get a little bit more output for our input seemed like an excellent idea. These low density structures can then flow up to a railway station over here, to be brought up here, where they can be made into these control units, the energy control units that we've been lacking for a little while. And that means those can then be brought over to the train system and loaded into the train that goes up to the, one of the, uh, the, up to the science areas up in space, where they can then be dropped off here and fed through, in, like, enabling us to make whichever of these data cards it was that required them. I think it's the, yeah, this one up here, the upvote data. And so, we, well, you can see the machines are running at the moment. We don't have a huge backlog of it right now, but they are at least being made, and that's a good thing, because they can then flow down here. They can go into this station in order to go into this train, and as you can see, once you get another 250 and a little bit more through, then the train can head over, back over to the uh, advanced science area, over over here, where they can be dropped off to make the Advanced Science Pack 1s. And from, from bringing all of that extra over, you can see we've now got plenty of the Advanced Science Pack 1 catalogues that are being fed down here to make, again, plenty of the Advanced Science 1 uh, Science Packs. And so we've now got a nice full healthy belt of that going down to the uh, Science Labs which are down here, and so we can actually get on with science. That said, science does not appear to be running. That's because we're trying to do an energy, very, very energy heavy science at the moment, and we've run out of Energy 4 Packs. But, you know, we're making, we're making progress. We've solved one of the bottlenecks, which was the Advanced Science 1 packs, and now we've run into another one, which is the Energy Science 4. However, that does mean we could work on doing a different research, uh, not this one, because it also requires Energy 4. We could carry on with this one, perhaps. Um, carry on doing Mining Productivity 12, and there we go. Now the except that we've run out of Bio 4 as well, so that one isn't going to work either. We're going to have to do a little bit of work on some of the more advanced science packs here and have a look into those and see why they're not being made at the moment, because there's some funny business going on there. For slightly further up north, Mike has been able to unload all of the Arcospheres that were gathered in the previous stream by the uh, Caladrian and the Deep Space Exploration Ship and feed them in over here. And so this means we now have, yeah, we have a, a reasonable number of all of the Arcospheres. We're seeing sort of between 5 and 13 by the looks of it, maybe it KG dips down to 4. So they're, they're not exactly balanced, but they're not doing too badly. He also managed to find three of the Arcospheres that have been lost previously, so we're not quite sure what's going on there. There's some ver something very, very strange, but, you know, what, what can you do? Having all these extra arcospheres wandering around means all of this system is now working nicely. So we've got a ready supply of the, uh, of, the of the processes being made. Well, I say a ready supply. We've got some of the processes being made. More would be nicer, but you know we're fill gradually filling up the backlogs. And so that has meant that Mike has been able to start making reality hypergraph data, this one up here. Uh, and that takes in, as you can see, that takes in the Naquin processors plus cryonite and data cards. And it's, it, it feels like that feels really, really expensive. But for each Naquin processor, you do get 50 of these analysis data cards out the other side. So it's... It, it, yes, the inputs are really, really expensive, but you also get a lot of science for it. And having made that one, we've now got all four of the cards we need in order to make Deep Space Science Catalogue 4. It's got one coming in here, we've got the two coming in from over here that are being made from Arcospheres, sort of the fairly traditional, well, sorry, one from Arcospheres, one from previous Deep Space Science packs, and one from flying spaceships around, and then this one from the processors. So those are fed in here along with some cryonite, because of course they are, uh, and that makes allows us to make the extended Deep Space Science catalogues, or Deep Space Catalogue 4, as we all tend to call it, and that drops onto this belt here, and this one then runs down all the way down into here, and we've got the standard system where we're making the, uh, making the actual science packs themselves. So you can see this works in much the same way as every other one does. You bring in a catalogue and an intermediate, and with Naquium that goes plate, cube, Tesseract processor, so getting gradually more and more expensive as you go through, and then you can actually make the, uh, the science packs that you want here. And, and, and as you can clearly see by this, we've, we've managed to make a, now a nice healthy supply of the Deep Space 4 science packs, and that's quite an achievement, because those are pretty much end game science. There is, a, there is only one more to do at this point. And we've not used very many of those, because virtually all of the Deep Space 4 researches require advanced science pack 2, which we hadn't made at the point where these started being made. So they weren't actually all that useful, but they were an important stepping stone onto what we were going to need next. 
And so, yes, that's all of the Deep Space Science packs. That, so that's a massive leap forward. We're now getting really, really close to the end of building all of the science stuff. The final push with science was to make Advanced Science 2, and the three data cards for that require large numbers of Arcosphere. So you can see these are on the Arcosphere belt, so they're being fed out from the storage area down here. They come all the way around, and they go past these machines, and in theory, these machines will grab the Arcospheres they need as they go past. Um, unfortunately, this one in the middle, I haven't seen it running yet. It seems to be struggling a little bit, perhaps by... Uh, Due to the, just the, the whichever array of arc spheres come past, maybe the machines further down the system down here are taking all of the ones that this one up here needs and turning them into other ones on the way past, so it's struggling a bit. It's hard to say. But Mike has reduced the speed that the arc sphere is being fed out down here by turning off one of these inserters. And he's done that because... But essentially because the folding system over here couldn't keep up and he didn't want to risk running out of one particular type of arcosphere. So now that has halved the throughput rate or the flow rate of the arcospheres. How we're going to get around that, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe we're going to need more folding systems, more folding recipe, more folding um, folders, more folding grab facilities around here uh, so we could double the height of these. I don't know, it's all a bit awkward at this point. It's all a bit sort of crammed in and, and going to be going to be a bit difficult. But um, yeah, the fact that we own oh, no, it there is running now, but the fact that this seems to be struggling a bit means that we may need to think about this a little bit. That said, let's follow this. Uh, let's follow these belts. They come all the way over here. They pick up some um, some of the AI cores on the way past over here. Apparently, actually, no, they don't. They pick up the AI cores fed onto the belt over here, rather than having another, an additional feed out of the station. It just means they're going around in a big loop down here, up here, round all the way around here to come back across here. But you know, who cares? Doesn't matter. <laughs> then they come down the belt down here, and okay, so that this this one, the um, this, this hourglass data seems to be doing quite well. The other two, not quite open. Here's, here we go, we've got lots of the, um, I don't know, is that a cassette? It's <laughs> something, some kind of swirly thing, anyway. Lots of, a reasonable amount of that data. And then down here, yes, the other type of hourglass data is also starting to back up. So we're not doing too badly. We do have a decent, we are making all of these data cards faster than we're using them, which means eventually these will back up all the way back round to the system that's producing them, and then maybe that'll take some pressure off the arcospheres over there and make things a little bit nicer. We'll have to see. But anyway, the, yes, those get all get fed down here. The um, the AI cores get split off here to be brought up. Uh, oh, that was uh, okay for for, for an, in a moment. I shall talk about that. And then we get some more of the rainbow catalogs fed in here because this as it is like Advanced Science One. You require three data cards and a rainbow catalog. Those rainbow catalogs were made from Tier Three catalogs for absolutely everything else. So they're expensive, um, but you know you can make rainbow catalogs. That's not too difficult. We, we've got that happening. And then more of those are brought down here because Advanced Science Two also requires its three data cards and rainbow catalogs. Fortunately, it's the same rainbow catalogs. It'd be a bit awkward if you then had to make another type as well. But you know, fortunately, you don't. So that is help now down here, making the catalogs at a healthy rate. As you can see, we've got a nice good backlog coming along here. So yeah, this is working well. Happy, very happy with this. These are then fed up to over here. And this whole advanced science area has turned into a bit of a spaghetti mess because it was crammed in in a rather small area. Or rather, it was put in over here when there was plenty of room and then somebody put a spaceship here. I mean, technically, this spaceship is required for Deep Space Science 4, so having it somewhere over here makes sense. But, you know, if it had been put up here, perhaps, then belt runs would have been shorter and we would have been able to fit Advanced Science 2 in up here. But never mind. These, thing, these things happen. And uh, we, we all like a bit of spaghetti in our factorio. So, yes, those can then be fed up to the up here. We've got the uh, the catalogs coming in, and what do you, what else do you take? So the AI cores being brought over for this. We need the significant data as well. Then the catalog. Um, oh, and the advanced science pack ones, of course. And neural gel, because that seems to be needed for all of the advanced sciences, and thermofluid, of course. So all of that gets fed in here. And then we've got the advanced science two packs coming out. And as you can see along here, we now have we have as many of these as we as, as we can deal with. Uh, I hope there's something along here dealing with these uh, memory cards. Yes, here we go. The dead, dead data cards are being brought out over here. And then these are fed down, 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 down the belts and into the into the science labs down here at the bottom. So we've now got to a point where we've got loads of all of the really, really advanced science packs. We're just a bit short on some of the merely fairly advanced science packs. It does remain to be seen if we get if we get the other ones running, so the Bio 4 and the Material 4, will we then start to have, will we then still have sufficient of the, uh, of the Deep Space 4 and of the Advanced 1 and 2s? That remains to be seen. I'm I'm hopeful, and there's a fair amount of buffer on the belt, so we, we should be okay, especially for things that only require some of the things. But if we have a look in here at the sciences, there is basically nothing that doesn't use Energy 4 or Bio 4. So, um, yeah, we're going to have to get those fixed before we can do any significant amounts more science, I think. Uh, apart from some of the very early things, like, okay, we could do more rocket reusability. But I want to try, I want to start using Deep Space Science 4. However, that one requires both Bio and um, Energy. That one requires Energy. Energy. 
This one has a prereg, which requires energy. This doesn't even use Deep Space Science 4. So, and requires bio four. So as you can see, there's a there's a distinct shortage of stuff we can actually do at the moment. There's another energy four, another energy and bio four, energy four, energy four, energy four. We could do this one. We could do energy shield mark six. That uses material four and advanced two and a deep space three and and of course astro four. We've got plenty of that. So I can start that one running and that one will actually work. So you see, there we go. The science labs have actually kicked in now. So we can let this run. It's not going to use any of the um, the deep space fours. However, we're uh, it does allow us to use up some of the deep space three and get things churning through a little bit. We also, as you might have noticed along here, ran into a rather silly problem where there's Deep Space Science 3 on both sides of this belt. So they're coming through. Now, fortunately, they're feeding in from the top, well, from the uh, the port side of it most of the way as it comes in out down here. Um, but yeah, the, um, mistakes were made and Deep Space Science 3 got put onto both sides of the belt. Now, we have fixed that. We're just trying to work through all of the Deep Space Science 3s that are on the bottom side of this belt. And when I looked at the end of the stream, it was conveniently underneath this underground belt here. It's also really hard to tell the difference between Deep Space 3 and Deep Space 4, especially when it's moving. But I'm pretty sure the changeover happens somewhere around here. I, I don't know. Anyway, there is a load of Deep Space 3 on the Deep Space 4 half of the belt. Eventually, that's going to come down here. It's going to be pulled through into this science lab down here. So as long as we've got enough Deep Space 3 science to do, the problem will eventually sort itself out. We just can't do any Deep Space Science 4 until that has been sorted. So, um, yeah. Oops. <laughs> Credit where credit's due. Tristan actually finished off the Advanced Science 2 research, uh, production over here um, because Mike had had to go to bed. And also Tristan had to shuffle the buildings around a little bit because Mike hadn't left room around them to get three pipes in and out of them. Because you see over here you need the, uh, the cold thermofluid in, the warm thermofluid out, and also the uh, the neural gel to be brought in as, as well. And so you can't... I, I think I think Mike had, had left this machine one square over to the left so this, this belt was in the way. Uh, something like that anyway. So there wasn't room to get all of the pipes in and around them. So he's done a little bit of rejigging there and, and fiddling. But that's not entirely Mike's fault because he was trying to blind build it when he didn't know exactly what was going to be going, where things were going to be fed into these machines. He was just relying on FNEI and it turns out he can't count to three because that's far too high. Last week, I talked about how the iridium production over on Kothar was being limited by a shortage of um, hydrogen chloride because Mike had fixed the nitric acid problem, <laughs> um, and that had, and, or at least that had filled up again, and then we'd had a hydrogen chloride related problem. And it turned out when we, when we looked into that, that was because his new system for producing the hydrogen chloride down here wasn't, was insufficiently beaconed. So we'd had this row across the bottom running initially, and that was under a beacon, but it wasn't fast enough. So we'd put in an additional row across the top, but that wasn't in range of the beacon. So we've moved the beacons up here a little bit and that has helped quite a lot. Now I see there seems to be a little bit of a, a stone problem down here and that these machines had stopped but I can't see how that, how or why that could have happened. It seems to be absolutely fine now. There is 10,000 in this warehouse down here. I'm not quite sure what was going on there but you can see we've got a load of sand coming in here. That's being turned into the hydrogen chloride to go up here to make the iridium powder. Now I did notice that it's still not running quite as fast as we'd like it to and that's because we've run out of nitric acid again. Now Mike is probably going to complain at me if I don't find the correct nitric acid production system but I think this one over here is the newest and there is some run, some of the machines are running over here but still quite a lot of them up here are not. So why are you sad? You've got a shortage of ammonia and you've got a shortage of nitrogen. So we've only got these machines down here producing the nitrogen. Perhaps we need another beacon on these ones. Uh, does that cover them? No, that beacon doesn't quite cover them. So if we put in another beacon down here, and then probably some additional nitrogen production machines, then hopefully that'll solve the problem. So I could put that there, and then I could copy all of this across to there, and then link these pipes in as well, like this. And if all the parts are over here on this planet, then this will all get built up, and it will start, and that'll double the rate of nitrogen production, production, and hopefully help things out quite a bit. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. And this is going to need to be done again in the proper game anyway. So. Uh, yeah, with the, the problem over here does appear to be nitrogen, though. So all these extra machines you put in over here, are they running? Yes, they're running. We've got, we've got all the extra oxygen being blown off over here. And we have plenty of hydrogen, but as I say, it's the nitrogen that's, that's the problem. We'll get that sorted out, and then we should be hopefully we'll be okay for the iridium. And maybe I'm being a little bit unnecessarily rude about the iridium production, because you can see over here, where it, it, there's been a general improvement as we came through here. And then this was probably where the hydrogen chloride was fixed. So suddenly, when we had plenty of everything, it ran at this speed, 692 per minute, which seems pretty good. And then it dropped off down to this level, and the nitrogen ran out, which 
To be fair, it's still higher than this level, which is when, which is from what we had previously when the hydrogen chloride was running out. So, you know, we are making steps, steps in the in the direction of improvement. Things are getting better. The problem is, as you can see over here, from these spikes and troughs in the uh, in the consumption of iridium, that's that's usually a sign of a spaceship arriving, the iridium getting used really, really quickly, and then having and all getting used up, and then having to wait for the next spaceship to arrive. So, yeah, it's, it's not perfect we haven't filled up the buffers again yet and we haven't we aren't producing it rapidly enough to sort of to keep everything running nicely but we are making steps in the right direction and uh, we're sorting out each of the inputs and making sure and trying to get it running nice and quickly and keep and, and producing the uh, the iridium at the rate we would like it to so yeah we have a we have a certain quantity of um, of the blast cake coming through here to be cooked up later on so you know it's kind of working i also had a bit of a look and a think about the the beryllium production over here on uh, talos and I poached it a little bit, and then thought, actually, no, I think it. I think it is actually okay. It doesn't. It isn't struggling too much. We've got. We have enough beryllium coming through. I don't think we have any problems with it. However, we currently only apparently have two thousand of it available over on, um, over in in, over in Norbit. So actually, maybe I need to take back what I just said about it being okay. We do seem to have a bit of a problem with beryllium. That's going. I think I am going to have to look at this. And now that's not. That's not too scary because this this whole pro system over here is a little bit old fashioned, especially the bit over here where we're bringing in the core chunks. There's not that many being brought in. They're only using tier three productivity modules. Uh, this this whole system around here could be improved quite a lot, and we could drag through a lot more core fragments and make a lot more around beryllium from it. Uh, I just need to put in more core mining drills around here and just basically I just need to modernize this whole area because it's not been touched very much for a while because I built up a system and it was okay and then it then it was admittedly then it started to run a bit slowly so I then expanded it with all of these ones which are pretty modern they're only on tier three modules but they're they're not too bad but we've now got to a point where perhaps it's time to do a third generation of it and I've put a, uh, a a plague rocket on this planet, so we cleared all the biters off it. So expansion is going to be relatively easy, and I'm not going to have to worry about putting all these things in walls anymore. So maybe it's, it's about time that I built another version of this, but for much, much higher throughput, and probably just over here somewhere, out in the out in the wilds where there's a bit more space. So I guess that's going to be a major project for me to uh, undertake, but it shouldn't be too difficult, I don't think, because beryllium is, to be fair, one of the easier recipes in the game. I've just noticed that we are also having, this system has shut down, so we also seem to have a, a problem with sulfuric acid. And is that because, yes, we have a shortage of sulfur coming through. Now, I thought I'd fix that, and I'd started requesting enough of it. So what's probably happened, yes, the spaceship has gone, and it's on its way back now with a load more sulfur. So the system has, has, has started to run out uh, before it's been able to fill all these warehouses up again. So perhaps I do need to bring more sulfur over to make more acid, to make sure that when the spaceship arrives, there is enough ready for it to immediately pick it up and, uh, and depart as soon as it possibly can, rather than sitting there waiting for the system down on the planet to run. We'll see what happens when the spaceship arrives. Yeah, it's currently sitting here unloading all of that beryllium. So it, it has only fairly, re only fairly recently arrived, as we can tell by the fact that it's still two-thirds full. Uh, and that is now topping up the beryllium supply over here. The train is running quite busily because, as you saw for earlier, we got quite low on the amount of beryllium we had over here, but it's just about held on. Yeah, so it, it needs a bit more, but it's not absolute crisis level. It's just a bit worrying level. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll need we'll need to buff this up quite a bit, I think. Make it start, have it producing it a bit faster and have it transporting a bit more sulfur so we can have a bit more a bit more sulfuric acid. We can have the space we can have the space station ready when the ship gets back to reload everything immediately. Yeah. For something I, I was going to say, well I had a quick look at it and decided it didn't need to be touched. I've said quite a lot about the uh, beryllium production. Returning to Talos once again, but this time on the other side of Talos, we have, looks like, ooh, we've finally run out of um, crushed Naquatite, so that's another problem that I'm going to need to go and poke at. Now, I reckon that's going to be down to a lack of spaceships, but let's talk about the thing I really came here to talk about first, and then go and have a look at that. There is a problem down here, where when the uh, system fills up and, on, and back on Norvis and stops requesting any of the Naquim or Naquatite, it, uh, these belts back up all the way down, as you'd expect. It comes down all the way down into here, these machines stop running, eventually the crystals back up all the way through here, and then we have a big problem because these centrifuges, then they keep running until they've got a certain amount of buffer in their outputs, which is how, how machines in Factorio work, that's fine. We, we, you, you, build, you can build up a little bit of buffer in the outputs. And so this problem happens because the machines will start unloading, I think they start unloading on the left, so they'll unload, so bear in mind at this point they'll have maybe, I don't know, say, let's say 50 of each of these things, it doesn't get up that high, but let's, let's say 50. So it unloads all the crystals, then it unloads all the powder, then it unloads all the refined, then it unloads the uh, reagent. And so the problem is 
that if the belt clogs up before it's been able to un start unloading the reagent, it won't take any more stuff in from the belt because it will think, well, I've still got a full, one of my outputs is still full, so I'm not going to fill up and put any more onto, into the inputs because that'll just make things worse. And so that means that this belt down here clogs up through here. And so the, the, uh, the powder and the refined that's being recycled coming back through here doesn't keep flowing. And therefore this belt down, down here can't keep flowing downwards in order to get rid of the, uh, all of the, by all the uh, results of, of this recipe. And so that means the belt clogs up all the way around here and the whole thing jams and it and just stops working. Nothing happens and you can't get any more and you can't get anything out of it. So as an emergency fix for this, I, I put this piece of belt in across the top and I can stick in a piece of belt here and that will essentially drain stuff through here and get it flowing round and round and round, which seems to have been enough to fix it, which kind of surprises me, but it does seem to help. Um, and then eventually it sort of pulls enough out of these machines that they can eventually start to run again. But that is problematic. It's very bad for keeping the system running. It just, yeah, it's, it just causes issues. And so we don't want that to happen. That's very, very bad. The problem is I've not come up with a good way to fix it yet. Because I can't, if I put in a buffer down here, then it'll just mean this is, this will keep running and running and running until the buffer's full and then it'll jam. Or would it? Perhaps it wouldn't. Perhaps it would jam on crystals, which is okay. But the, uh, and these two, these two byproducts will be fine. So I'd need to put in quite a lot more beltage and spaghetti down here to fit a, uh, a system in to buffer both of the two things separately. But that could work. Hmm, maybe I should, maybe I should try that. I think that might be the answer. So if I put in that belt going like that, and then this one coming down here, and then have a couple of chests in to, uh, to, to, to buffer it, like that. So here we go, the, the powder will go into this chest, the uh, crushed will go into this, or the refined will go into this chest. Uh, they'll, go, they'll get passed straight through in normal use, but when the crystal backs up, then it'll fill up this belt all the way along here, and that will then probably jam before we start to take all of these excess outputs out. So I think this might work. I don't know if I have all the bits on this planet that I need to build that. I don't have all the bits on this planet that I need to build that, but I think the theory is pretty good. So I can, I can bring some more parts out here, get this put together, and hopefully that will work. However, that's not the problem we're having at the moment. At the moment, the system is quite happy. It's not jammed over here. We've got uh, The problem is that we don't have any of the crushed naquitite. And that's because we don't have any up here in, the, uh, in coming, being dropped off by spaceships. And if we look out in space, we can see that there are none of the, um, none of the Stardust spaceships out here. If we go out to the interstellar map, we can see, okay, there's one on its way back here, one on its way out, one on its way back. So it looks like all these spaceships seem to be flowing quite nicely. I think I just don't have enough spaceships. If we look over here in Stardust, we can see that we have a, we have full warehouses here. We are completely ready for a ship to land and we'll be able to load it up straight away. We've still got a decent amount of sulfur down here. The tank up here, this, this tank's got 89,000 in it, and this one up here is is practically full. So we've got loads of sulfuric acid. This system, this system over here is working really, really well. This is fantastic. However, we don't have enough spaceships to bring it all through. So yes, next next time we need to build up a lot more spaceships to be to do the to do the route between um, to do the route between Talos and and Stardust. We just don't have enough of them. I would I would prefer it if they were queuing in places rather than there just not being enough spaceships to give us the uh, the throughput we need. Down on Bigrid, Mark has started bringing in steel by spaceship because he wasn't producing enough iron ore to make enough steel to keep the uh, barrel barreling happy. I notice he has quite a lot of iron ore coming through here, or at least some iron ore coming through here. So maybe he's just gone, eh, I can't be bothered make, making steel on site. We're just going to bring it in from Norvis. That's going to be easier. Uh, so he has a supply of steel available here that can be fed down all these long belts over to here where he's cutting it up into plates in order to make it into barrels here to... to um, to feed down another ludicrously long belt to put all of the uh, put all of the crude oil into. Um, I don't I don't know what's happening with all of the uh, pyroflux. The, pyro, the pyroflux being just jettisoned. That's very very wasteful. Mark, you've got everything in here. You just need another. No, you just need to get rid of that and put in one of these machines here to to take to take to take it away as in, in barrel form. That, that that'd be much nicer. What's going? Why why did you have it like this? I, I have no idea. Um, I also don't know what this this one's... Oh, this is mineral water. Yeah, we don't really care about mineral water. The other big change is that we're now shipping wood out from this planet instead of instead of uh, burning it or instead of processing it into processed fuel first. Now that's probably quite a lot less dense, which means we're going to be running a few more spaceships. As you can see, there is quite a lot of wood being brought through and then passed into these spaceships. This is this is almost as bad as the sulphur coming from Taras. In fact, I think this is worse than the sulphur coming from Taras. Um, but at least he doesn't have the sand to deal with as well. But yeah, that is a lot of wood in this spaceship. Uh, and a lot of wood on these belts. That's pretty crazy. Uh, so yes, that's all being brought over now in enormous quantities uh, from Big Rid. And that means when it gets unloaded over here in Norvis, well, we've got another belt to take it away down here where it goes into a, a, a rather large buffer where it's then passed over to a train. And the original plan with this 
this was that we were going to use this for making steel, uh, which is done over here. Yes, yeah, so here we've got we've got wood being brought in here, so that's what this that's what this is for. The train will bring wood over here, it'll unload it here. We've got 17,000, that's fine. It gets brought up here, turned into coke, made into steel. Great. However, there is so much wood being brought out from over from um from Big Red, that we're now starting to get a bit of a, a we're now starting to become a bit of a problem. As you can see here, we've got uh, 40,000 in there, we've got another 51,000 in here. It, it, it is too much. And this one inserter here is, is struggling to keep this, this warehouse full, which is mildly amusing. So the plan is that Tristan wants to put in another uh, wood request station, probably over here near the bus, where all of the uh, where all the processed fuel is being made. So as you can see, there's a small trickle of wood coming through here from, from the bus, as that's the excess we have. And that's coming up here and being made into, into processed fuel. Now, the processed fuel... Um, we, we still have a lot of processed fuel as well, but if we can start turning all of that excess wood into processed fuel At least it'll give us something useful to do with it rather than just have it um, Rather than having it just filling up filling up warehouses So yes another train is going to be required to bring the wood over to perhaps here Which was originally a rocket fuel drop, but now can be a, a, a wood drop So we'll bring that over from from up here down to here turn it into processed fuel And then at least we'll have it'll be vaguely useful. It'll keep our trains running on time. Hopefully <laughs> yeah, that is, a that is a lot of wood that uh, Marcus suddenly started exporting and uh, Tr Tristan is just desperately trying to deal with. But um, that's how Factorio goes, I suppose. Mark also discovered that he was ripping through the mineral water far too quickly over on Big Red because this recipe here that makes the fertilizer requires nitric acid. And as you've seen uh, from the problems that are happening right on Kothar, uh, oh, and, and it requires uh, mineral water straight up as well. So but I think both of these steps require mineral water. So no wonder he's getting through a lot of it. And he's had to put in some extra mines. Like this one down here? Yes, here we go. Yeah, there's a, there's a mineral water mine here, feeding it into a duct, and that passes it down here all the way back into the base, where it can be used for all the processing and making all the Vita products that we're needing in such large quantities. And I think this is a reasonably suitable point to split the video. I've come to the end of talking about uh, the Big Rid and the, uh, and, and the wood byproducts from all of the Vita processing. So, don't forget to come back tomorrow for the third and final part of this video, where I'll be talking about a few more things. There's some train stuff, some core mining, and a few other things. And, of course, we'll have a look at what research we've been doing recently. Then on Monday, we'll be back to carry on with the stream. So we'll be solving the problems I've been sorting about, maybe trying to get some more Naquium spaceships and some beryllium, well, some more beryllium being made. Uh, that should be fun. And then I'm afraid that's going to be it for a while because I'm going to be going away on holiday. So there won't be a satisfactory stream on Wednesday and it'll be uh, very then completely quiet on the channel for the next two weeks probably. I might try and squeeze a couple of little videos in here and there. We'll see what we can do. Uh, but it's going, to be, it's going to be much quieter than normal I'm afraid. But it's still worth being subscribed to the channel because then you'll find out when I come back and uh, you'll be re ready and re raring to go for the uh, next Factorio K2SE stream which will be on the 15th of April. So I hope to see you on Monday and then again three weeks after that for the next one. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.